Welcome to the LinkedIn Get Client Summit. Uh, we have a special guest today, Caroline Ho. Uh, she's the conversionista. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. So excited. Pumped. Yeah, I'm very excited to bring this topic really to our audience because, again, you know, we're bringing something unique to this uh, summit in terms of um, quizzes and LinkedIn. And, um, you know, quizzes is something that a lot of people are not using for engagement, but you've got a whole new uh, model strategy around that, which I want our audience to really know about. So, but before we get started, Caroline, we normally start, okay, with a number of quick fire rounds, okay? So get ready for these, all right? So you're an English lady living in USA, okay? How long have you been there? Oh, if I tell you, I have to kill you. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> a long time, okay. What is the big difference that you've noticed between the USA and the UK? Um, I would say um, mindset. You know, I think that um, um, I know everyone feels that everyone in the USA is a little, more, a little bit more advanced. I wouldn't say they're more advanced. I just think there's different mindsets and approaches to doing business that I've seen. And so they approach it differently. But um, um, social media has made it that we can all, you know, jump in this happy online business game together. And so um, I'm seeing more of those ideas coming together. Okay. Uh, what was the one thing you miss about the UK since you've traveled to the US? Um, fish and chips. Fish and chips. And, <laughs> I and probably knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, fish and chips and what's it? <laughs> what's it? The crisps? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> what is the one thing that, that you love about the USA? I love the entrepreneurial spirit here. Absolutely mm -hmm. love that. And, you know, the people are uh, just so diverse and you know and you know the get up and go attitude i absolutely love that not to say they don't have that in europe or the uk but i just love the entrepreneurial spirit here okay okay um i'm gonna ask some really random questions now what store do you shop at most um can you believe i shop in aldi which was a european store right but i just absolutely love it here so i shop in aldi and oh, so they have an aldi in the u.s they US as well. Aldi. When oh, it wow. first landed, everybody was brand new about it. I was like, oh, you know, no, I know this. So right. I shop there a lot for food. And uh, I do miss Marks and Spencers. Um, yeah. And where else do I shop? And then like clothes, I like um, Anthropology. And uh, okay, yeah. So when was the last time um, you laughed out loud? Um, this morning. <clears throat> This morning, wow. This That's morning. Amazing. Okay, we won't get into why you laughed out loud. But... <laughs> I love to ask. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done any uh, lately that's been like spontaneous? Um, on Sunday, I went down a 27 foot water slide, which was very spontaneous. Yeah, <clears throat> I was doing wacky races on the water slide. Okay. Totally scared, but I actually did it. And it was a blast, but I screamed all the way down. Wow. That was very spontaneous. Okay, thank you very much. That's the end of the quick uh, fire round. Um, cool. Now, I'm going to go into, you know, what did you do really before you, you went into this digital marketing? What were you doing? Well, I was a software engineer, hmm. um, um, programming, designing, and deploying bespoke applications. Um, and so that a real techie, fun. a real techie. I am a techie. Right. I am a techie, a very big techie. So why um, did you decide to transition into what you're doing now? What was the thought process behind that? Because, you know, technology and business and marketing go like bread and butter, like peanut butter and jelly. And a lot of technologists have a lot of knowledge, but they don't know how to sell their knowledge. So if you learn how to exp sell expensive things, right, you will always um, acquire wealth. And so I decided to go into business because um, I had expertise, but I wanted to know how to sell my expertise outside a cubicle, right? And so to do that, I had to learn business and I had to learn how to sell and I became very successful at it and helped lots of clients. And then all of a sudden it morphed me into this new world that I've been in for quite a while and being very successful 
And it also helped me to um, use automation and all the stuff that people kind of run away from because it's not their zone of genius to not only just have strategy, but have systems that actually bring their strategy to fruition. Because I say all strategy and no systems makes entrepreneur a very poor girl or um, guy. So I merged the two together with my technical background and my business background to make sure that people have systems that actually bring them revenue. Fantastic. Um, what challenges have you faced on this journey? Um, I must have, yeah, I, I'm going to imagine that you've come across a number of challenges in the transition phase. What, what type of, can, can you think of any and can you elaborate on, on a few? Well, I feel like any entrepreneur trying to stay focused especially when you're what I call um, a multi-potentialite, meaning that you have like a million ideas in the shower every morning and you want to gung-ho get on every single one of them. So staying focused on one big main thing was a challenge for me before. And even though I preached it to my clients, it was hard for me to do that because, you know, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that. And, um, but staying focused and ignoring the, light, the noise online and just um, being persistent and consistent. Fantastic. Um, I notice, I mean, I see you, you share a lot of videos um, about your brand and what you do, and you do get a lot of engagement. Um, what, you know, in terms of uh, what is the benefit of that, you know, in sharing your videos um, online and on social media? Okay. Well, <clears throat> So part of building um, automated systems and sales funnels, people think it's just technology, but really what I focus and zone in first is messaging, right? Because automation technology is just the vehicle that carries your message. So is social media, right? It's just a, it's just a catalyst for your message. And so the key to doing that is being very clear in what your message is. And so video and all that kind of stuff that I do online, it's just really to layer your message because online, that's all people really have to go on um, to decide whether they want to work with you, decide whether they know, like, or trust you. It's your message. And your message doesn't have to de be delivered in one form, right? So uh, you, could, you could have a message house, like a theme to your message. And so everything that you do online, if you want people to understand how you help them and what you stand for, has to be connected to your message. And video is one of the best ways to do that, to clarify your message and encapsulate it in video. And um, you can automate that. And so you can be omnipresent, right? You can be everywhere at the same time with video. They can catch the essence of who you are as well as what you do and how you help. So that's the key. Being consistent with your message and showing up with your message um, will, will help you online know it. A lot of people are introverted, actually. There's a big percentage of people who are just shy, who are afraid. They know the value of going, you know, creating a video or going live. You know, I mean, what tips or advice can you give people like myself who are introverted and shy and want to share our message, but we're, we're just afraid to do that because it took me years to be able to go in front of a camera and share my video. What would you say? Could you do that with real ease? But what advice would you be able to give? Well, first of all, you have to understand there's a mindset issue and we have to get over or we have to have this mindset um, paradigm shift, right? So that's important um, to understand what the fears about going live, about showing up. Um, many of us have come from a corporate environment and we have been um, conditioned to be who the corporation wants us to be. But as entrepreneurs, we get to show up as ourselves and our authentic self is what sells and we should amplify that online. So many a times we feel that we're not enough, we're quirky, um, we're shy, but that's the endearing part that people really wanna see online. It's very different from corporate. So what I would say is that just to have confidence in your inconfidence, right? Your, in, in, your, in your lack of self-esteem, because you know that's endearing. Nobody wants someone who knows it all or, or has done it all. And also there's different ways to show up and get your message out there without always being on video, right? You can use audio, you can use branded pictures. So when people say to me, oh, well, I don't wanna show up on video, I'm like, the video doesn't always have to be you. There's screen shares, there's different ways to bring across your message and show your expertise. And so really and truly, it's a, um, a case of analysis paralysis and um, not moving in imperfect action. Fantastic. 
Now, before, you know, in a few seconds, you know, we're going to show the audience a demo of uh, quizzes for clients, but just tell us, give us a high level um, about this program that you've devised. Okay, so quizzes for clients is based on my quiz hacking methodology. And um, um, my um, premise is that the PDF lead magnet is dying a slow and painful death. The market has become particularly savvy to um, being given a PDF in exchange for an email address. I always say that, you know, there's a store over here called Chick-fil-A that's always closed on Sunday. So, you know, the market is closed to PDF lead magnets like Chick-fil-A is on a Sunday. People always want to get Chick-fil-A on a Sunday and it's closed, right? And why is that? Because, you know, the game's up, right? Nobody really wants to, even though your 25-page PDF download took ages to create, may, may, may have sent off to Canberra or, or Fiverr, people in the beginning of the customer journey really don't want to commit that amount of time to your content. Right? They hardly know you. And so you have to give the appropriate kind of content at the appropriate kind of time in the customer journey. And that's why quizzes are great. Quizzes um, tap into human psychology. It taps in, it, it, it invokes the nosy parker in us all. So when you rouse our curiosity, we, are, we have to um, close that open loop. And that's why quizzes are so effective. So um, I know that the traditional way of getting somebody to opt in onto your email list, and if you're an online business, you know the money is in your list and everyone's selling to grow an email list. Well, the bait, the PDF bait, is not as effective. It's effective in, at different areas or different stages of the customer journey. But I'm seeing 70% conversions with quizzes rather um, um, than like 20 or 30% with PDF lead magnets for that psychological reason. So quizzes are the best kind of bait earlier on in a customer journey to entice people onto your list. Willing. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a, a real high level. And now we'll take you to uh, Caroline's demo um, and how she integrates that with LinkedIn. You've got to watch this demo, guys. It's something that you guys are going to be using in your business for a long time. So uh, thank you very much for coming on uh, the summit, uh, Caroline, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast.